thinking of this. Holy cow, man. I don't know what hat that I'm going to sit here with Anthony Beck. Let's see here. He's the head coach of the Rocks XFL St. Louis Battlehawks. By the way, the attendance at that place. Hey, NFL, don't ever tell me there's not football fans in St. Louis. You are way off your marker on that. They were 7-3. and three. He also works in the pre and post for the New York Jets. Big time Buccaneer fan as well. Worked a lot in their broadcast. Our friend Anthony Beck joins us now. Beck, what what hat are you, man? I mean, what is it? I mean, what that <laughs> pre and post game? Holy cow! Stringing them all together, ain't you, man? Well, you know the hat I got on now. Iowa State. That's my hat this week. Saturday, my son plays. You know, he's the quarterback. So that's my hat as a. I'm a dad fan in the in the bleachers trying to mind my own business. It's been hard to do that because it seems like the cameras have been finding my wife and I sitting there biting our nails off. But uh, it's been awesome to watch my kid do something that I love to do so for so long in my career. How about this? So how long has your kid been there? He is a redshirt freshman. Yeah, he's a redshirt so, freshman. Was he there when um, Brock Purdy was there? Yeah, so Brock, when Brock got uh, his final season and then into that draft, that's when Rocco came in uh, and signed, came in early. So uh, he got to get, you know, a little, a few months of him uh, on campus before, you know, he went on with the draft. But uh, it was, it was post, uh, post Purdy. Are you shocked how good he's playing out in uh, San Francisco? Not at all. You know, it's funny. Um you know, I remember, um, you know, because obviously I was following the team quite a bit. They were pretty active with my son during the recruiting process. And, and you know, the Jets have had drafted multiple guys for, uh, from Iowa State the last couple of years. Um, you know, I listen, here's a four-year starter in a Power 5 school, has every single record that school has to offer, the wing, winningest quarterback in the school's history. Now, the history of the school, football-wise, it's not great. It's, you know, it's not Miami. It's not, you know, Alabama. But, you know, from the time he was there, it was the best it's ever been. And, um, you know, everyone talked about his size. You know, he had a he had a great sophomore year, junior year, and his senior year was kind of like high expectations for the team. Brees Hall, Charlie Kohler, all these guys. And he didn't live up to expectations, you know, that, that season. And there was a little, little bit of a downer on him coming out. And I just remember, like, you know, there was just, you know, he wasn't in the – he's not draftable. You know, I was I was pissed because, you know, he wasn't invited to the Senior Bowl. I, when I made – when I went to the Senior Bowl, Dan, I don't know if you play, play there or not, but, you know, the Senior Bowl was for guys that had tremendous long-term careers that had done a significant amount of, of accomplishments over their college uh, uh, time. And it seemed like – It was that place you know, in the Hula Bowl. Yeah, exactly. So it was – you know, and he was not in that game. I mean, I'm looking at quarterbacks that have one year experience, and these guys are getting in this opportunity. And I, I even I reached out to 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 Nagy, you know, who runs that game. He's a great guy, yeah. but you know, he he's high on our list. But you know, we can't get him. I'm thinking to myself, what's what's the requirement for this? You know, so uh, now did I think he'd come in and never lose a game since he started in the NFL? No, but it's the perfect system, damn right. Like for what he does. As smart as he is, he's played in 50 game college. He's seen it all, and he's just bringing that over. But he's got that mock. He's got that if factor, man. He's he's got that leadership bug that just you know. You look at these quarterbacks that come out; they got so much talent now. But he's got that 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 it thing, that mental piece that separates his maybe what he lacks in a talent standpoint and builds it up even more. You, you hear about his players and his teammates; they love him. Let me before I get to the Buccaneers, give me your spin on Jalen Hurts. I mean, you know, you, you also work uh for the Rock and personnel. You look at these guys, you you fundamentally scout these guys, you look at their intangibles and all. Have you been surprised with how he has skyrocketed from his situation at Alabama? He goes and transfers to Oklahoma. You know, he was drafted, Anthony, in Philadelphia to be a seatbelt for Wentz. Now, all of a sudden, this guy is a $50 million guy, and he's looking like he's the future of the football team. Are you surprised where he is? You, you know what? I'm surprised in the big picture because, you know, I don't think anybody would have projected him to be where he's at right now in the NFL. The thing that I doesn't surprise me is, you know, when I was calling games when he was a freshman in Alabama, 
all the way through every year, every snap, everything he's always done. He's always been the hardest worker. He's always been the most astute of improving and, and taking on everything as far as just the negatives and growing from it. Even when he left every year, he he's, he's added to his game. And even in the league, again, continue to add on when his chance came. And then when his chance came and now the organization bought into him, similar to let's say the Ravens and Lamar, uh, Mar Jackson. Now you cater to his skill set. You load him up with some talent. Okay. You give him the confidence in the field. And again, he's still, is he a premium passer in the league at times? He's not there yet on a consistent basis, but who is, I mean, quarterback play right now. I mean, let's be honest. It's been a lot of Rocky road for quarterbacks, especially this season starting out. So, uh, I, I'm not – it doesn't surprise me in the fact that he's continued to improve himself and he's still got a lot of space. And they do build around what his skill set is, and he understands his skill set. So, uh, you know, now to this day, I'm thinking to myself, you know, he's he's a long-term guy. He's got those, those skills that can keep you around, can help an offense, even if an offensive line isn't good, which I think they have a good line. But he's able to just do things around that. So, you know, he's kind of that – he's kind of that guy – that kind of fits that mold and, and he's really taken off with it. So, you know, clearly he's, he's done great things. And I think it's a match of his pursuit of excellence and his drive and really the, the people and system around him to make him successful. You've played over a decade in the NFL at the tight end position. What's your take on Dallas Goddard? Well, right now he seems to be underused. <laughs> That's probably the first thing. Uh, I think he's fantastic. I mean, he's got everything you want. He's got size, toughness. He can run. He's athletic. You know, he, he reminds me of, uh, you know, when Selleck came in. Uh, he's that kind of guy. I mean, he's a bigger guy than Zach Ertz is. So, you know, from a target standpoint, I mean, you know, he, he's kind of a money, a prototypical money guy when you talk about what he can bring in the passing game. So I like him a lot. I mean, uh, listen, and you look at Jalen Hurts and his game, He's a guy to me where, you know, you want to take advantage of that, that he boosts the completion percentage up. He boosts moving the chains. He's a guy that can, you know, get you more snaps as an offense because of the routes that he runs and the significant mismatch that he poses versus safeties and linebackers. Let's move over to the Bucks. You know, why am I looking at Baker Mayfield and saying this? Boy, I'll tell you what, I like Baker Mayfield Tampa more than I like Baker Mayfield Cleveland. I mean, you know, they're not putting a ton of points up. They don't have any running game, so to speak. Uh, Mike Evans was told he's not going to be renewed, and he's going off with 120 yards a game. Their defense is still top five. Are you surprised that they're 2-0? and I am. You know, it's interesting. You know, you, you talk about Mike Evans. It's interesting when you don't – when you got a contract, need it, how, how the game rises and continues to, <laughs> to manufacture what you manufacture. And for Baker – I'm going to be quite honest. And when I was in the the, the pundit side where I was, you know, uh, evaluating town and doing the media, I wasn't a big fan of Baker Mayfield. I didn't think he was a first round worthy guy. Uh, you know, he went top pick in the draft. I mean, and, you know, came I'm with you. With I thought of, he was a cheer. I thought he was a cheerleader, Anthony. I just didn't think he was mature enough for the position. No question. But I will say this. I like this Baker Mayfield, a guy that has a chip on his shoulder a guy that's looking to prove people wrong, a guy that's been humbled, right, from, you know, being that top pick and everybody doubting him and kind of falling through. And he's been hurt and injured. And, you know, he kind of lost his job in between playing through an injury and trying to figure out, does he play? Does he get get healthy? And, you know, now it's like, okay, he's got a, a blank chapter here in the book. And, you know, listen, there's some skill sets, again, very similar to Jalen Hurts. He can move around. He's elusive. Uh, he's a little erratic with the football, but he hasn't turned the ball over yet. So, you know, if you don't turn the ball over, he's got game experience. I thought he played well when he was with a couple games for the Rams. He reinvented himself a little bit. And long as he understands who he is and he doesn't go back to what he may have thought he was, uh, I think he's he's actually a guy that can continue to win for the Buccaneers. As a matter of fact, I think this weekend, I think they can pull off this upset and keep it close. So, against the Eagles, I believe, is it Sunday or Monday night? So Monday night. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, uh, again, you know, it's a team with nothing to lose. They got a great coach. Todd Bowles is phenomenal. Uh, they always are going to have a great defense. Vita Vey is the, arguably the best combo pass rush run stop D tackle in the league, and he continues to shine. And they got pieces now 
on that defensive side that really stand out. So, you know, are they going to make the playoffs? No. Is the division weak? Yes. So, you know, they, they got an opportunity there. But, uh, I mean, you know, you know how it is. You start winning football games, it's contagious. It's, it's, it's like anything. You lose games like the Bears, you know what, man? You may not – you don't know when you're going to lose uh, win another game. So, uh, I think they have an excellent chance. And I just think the parity right now in the league is so much closer than, than years past. That, you know, if you can play good, smart, sound football, have a good defense and don't turn the ball over, you'll be in the game every fourth quarter uh, during the season. Here, let me throw this at you, too. You know, it's funny. I wonder what Jason Light, the general manager, is thinking, because they had to be thinking, hey, I'm going to maybe move some of our pieces as we get closer to the trading deadline. They find themselves 2-0 and and all of a sudden they're slowly moving down the draft board, Anthony. And when that means is this, could this guy be a long term solution and i mean by three four years in tampa before they can figure this thing out here baker mayfield if he continues to win like you say if they go three and oh they're not getting rid of anybody they may even rethink that whole thing with evans in the offseason here's a there's only one guy in nfl history with more 1000 yard seasons than mike evans it's jerry rice i mean no is that that game on monday is pretty big for the organization it really is. And you're right. I mean, the more they win, unfortunately for them, if they're aligning yeah. themselves and they, and they unloaded certain areas, you know, they probably were like, okay, we can get Drake May or Caleb Willie or, you know, one of these guys. Yeah. But, you know, again, do you really like when you think about like NFL teams now, it's all about now. I mean, yeah, you could talk about the future, but they could draft a number one pick and they may lose two straight seasons before that guy figures it out. And then by that time, it'll be a whole new coaching staff. So it's like, okay, you just kind of roll with it, man. And there's so many quarterbacks coming out of this draft. They'll, they can find their way to get a guy that they need that that, that comes out. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, listen, they got 15 more games left. They, they may lose the next 15 more games. They're, they're just kind of like, you know, they're in the mix. They're gaining confidence. But, again, I think week to week, especially in the league, I don't think there is no – I don't believe in momentum in the NFL. I truly, These are grown men that all are trying to feed their family every week you got to show up on Sunday or you're going to get your ass whipped by that team. I don't care what their record is. And they got to continue to do that, play great defense. If they do, they're always going to have a chance. But I don't know if it's going to guarantee them the trajectory they want, but they may still be in a good spot for a draft pick uh, after this season as well. couple last questions for you here. We had Boomer Esiason on yesterday, and this is always a big topic in Philadelphia. That's where we're based. Um, uh, when we're talking about Carson Wentz, and he believes – that Joe Douglas, obviously there's a relationship with Carson Wentz. He's probably the best available guy that's out there where you don't have to surrender draft capital. If you think about it, Anthony, I mean, the one saving grace, and there's only really one silver lining in this thing with the um, Aaron Rodgers injury is that the Jets don't have to send a one to Green Bay now because now it's a two because he doesn't play 65% of the games. So it's only a second round draft choice instead of the first round. Do you think, do you look at him and say, like Boomer said yesterday, that Wentz is probably the best option. We're going to see what happens in this game against New England this weekend. Is it Wentz? Well, you're right. You know, they can get him off the street for nothing. And, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt, right, to, to at least right. see. Um, I'll be honest with you, and, and people may laugh at this, but, you know, I was his coach and I know what he can do. You know, A.J. McCarron, to me, is a guy that I, I just think he is. I don't know why he's not a two in the league. Nobody's talking about this as an option. But I can tell you this. You put A.J. McCarron in this roster, OK, and you let him play. We run the same system. Our system is very similar to about 12 teams in the NFL. The Jets is one of them. He's going to come in and learn everything in a week. And he's going to be the smartest guy in the room every single day. Uh, excellent leader. He's got eight years NFL experience, but a lot of tread on his tires. And what he needed was a season to prove himself. He did that with my team. But again, people out the XFL, it's not the NFL. I think where, where it, it's similar is, you know, offensive line play in my league is, is not great. The pressure's on. We chose to go the route of a quarterback that can diagnose at the line of scrimmage so that he can have a plan, get it out, and match that with the offensive scheme that we had with our play caller, Bruce Gorkowski, who I think is a stud. And he killed it in the league. Now, we didn't win the championship. We were one of the best teams. But, man, like pieces around him, I just don't know. Now, I don't know what the, the deal is. I don't. He's 33. Um, you know, teams just, you know, 
I look at the list of guys you mentioned, Carson Wentz, some of these other players. I'm just like, no, like I don't like I don't think it's there. But, you know, if you're looking at just that list, yeah, I mean, Carson Wentz is worth the worth the risk. They do have that bye week, I think week six. They can figure it out if it's kind of there. But again, that's a real wild card for me. I think it's a legitimate play. But, you know, I've put I pushed that name in front of the organization. You know how tight I am with the organization. But uh, they're going to have to do the best they can. And I think they want to give Zach a legitimate chance. But, again, uh, you know, we need more information on him because I just don't know if he's going to be able to get it done or not. You know, Anthony, that's such a brilliant way of looking at this. When you're in a league of – where you're on a lesser team, whether it be the NFL or any league. And I played in spring leagues. I played in NFL Europe. And you always see the line play, especially the O-line play. It's a tougher thing to de- – offensive linemen are tougher to develop than defensive linemen. Everybody on the planet knows that. So for you to get a quarterback in there, you didn't really give a crap who the name was on the back of the jersey. You wanted a guy that could process the information as quick as possible so that he could dissect it because you knew you were going to have deficiencies in your O-line. Pressure in the middle and pressure off the perimeter – you wanted guys to be able to dissect that intel as quick as possible because that yeah. was going to move the chains. We looked at a, a lot of people don't see it that we, way. Yeah, we looked at a hundred guys, honestly, Dan. Like guys, you were like, "Wow!" Like I didn't even know he was still out there. But if you looked at PJ Walker, for instance, who had a lot of success in that league as a dual threat guy, you know, threw the ball well, but was able to extend and run around, and he got his chance in the league. Well, we really couldn't find that piece, and we said, "You know what, man? Like." The offense we're running, you know, you got you got a lot of options. Like there's a lot, you know, if there's a weakness or there's audible, we have a lot of check with me. Different things where we give the quarterback that the uh, the ability to make us right as a staff. Right now, every quarterback can't handle that. AJ McCarron is a guy that can. So now he's like another offensive coordinator on the field. So now we're not wasting time trying to you know coach up a quarterback. Now, no, did he make mistakes and did he get coached up? Of course, I mean, absolutely, but you had that comfort level to know that, you know, he could get you out of trouble, you know, and the, all you got to do is turn the tape on, you know, it's, every team blitz did all kinds of stuff, but when they played us, it tempered down, even, even uh, coach Williams. Okay. Who, who lit up our league and blitz pretty much 80% of the time. <laughs> he he respected AJ in our two games. Then they beat us fair and square, but he respected him and he did not bring it as much even close to as much as he did with the rest of the league when he played us. Um, is Zach Wilson the future in New York? Uh, today, no. You know, I, I don't think he is. I mean, the only way you're going to know is if he plays. And this – look, this is the best it's going to get for him as a quarterback. You're, you're young. You kind of struggled after Brees Hall and AVT got hurt last year and it kind of went downhill – and he had a decent start to the season. Now he's got everything. He's got an awesome defense. He's got a ton of pieces, three tight ends, a bunch of receivers, uh, multiple running backs. The Okay, the offensive line didn't play great, but I think it's, you know, you're not facing the Cowboys defense up front either every single week. So it's going to get better. He's He's got a, basically a five-week tryout here, okay? If he can get it done, he'll be the quarterback moving forward. Do I think there's enough there for them to make a push and squeeze into the back door of the playoffs. I really do. But he does have to show more. And it, it, it's even in a win, there's got to be something pertinent that he brings to the table. I, I, it doesn't have to be all him. But if they can't run the ball, which they couldn't do last week, he's not going to win the game with his arm. You know, the, the run features that he has are huge. That, help, that helps. But, you know, in this league, man, you're going to have to make some throws. And it's got to be more than just a slant to Garrett Wilson for a touchdown. You're going to have to have, you know, multiple times in a game where you got to make a play and move the sticks. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you, we had the rock on Monday. What's it like working for him, dude? What's it like, you know, being involved in that? Because, you know, this guy loves people who think out of the box. You know, it's funny. I always thought that you had a dilemma Man, I really like broadcasting, but shit, I want to be more of a coach too. And I always thought it, then your kids dynamic jumps into it. And that's why you got all the dishes going like this right now. I mean, Tell me what it's like to uh, to be in that league because I am a huge fan of spring football. You know I am. I played in it. Just some of your thoughts about working with the Rock in that league. Yeah, well, first and foremost, uh, you know, he, he's been unbelievable. Uh, I'm very thankful and humbled that he gave me a chance. 
you know, Dan, I wasn't on anybody's radar when this thing no. got started. When when Danny and Redbird and, and Dwayne bought this league in August of 2020, and I saw those headlines, because I had experience in the AAF. I coached in that league. Yep. You remember out in San Diego yep. with yep. Mike Martz. I said to myself, I'm going to be a head coach in, one of, in this league. That day, and I went on a mission to get in front of the right people. And you talk about, you know, kind of that out of the box. I, you know, I had a really good vision on what I thought the spring league needed. I knew my skill sets and I knew that I could do it. I mean, it, you know, being a true head coach, a CEO of men, hiring good staff to do their jobs and letting me handle game day operation, all that stuff, situational stuff and managing it from a day one to the final day. See, that's like what that's me. That's that's the way I've always been. But also the other stuff like, you know, outside of maybe Deion Sanders, who well, I, I'm on Twitter and social and I'm, I'm I'm talking with the fans and you know we had the number one fan base you know close to 40 unbelievable yeah it was unbelievable. I was playing a semi ticket director for the for the whole year that I got brought on to to really get the fan base juiced up and you know I told them one thing that I was selling I was like listen you guys show up we'll put a pro and I'll put a product on the field that you guys can be excited about and they were going to come because they just love football they miss football they hate the Rams left but we were able to put a great product in front of them. And, uh, you know, I, I just tried to hit the ground running, man, and, and do it the way that I wanted to do it. But I also learned from a lot of really good coaches, and good ways and bad ways to do things. And um, I love it, man. I, I can't wait for the season to start. Um, and listen, What about you the know, word on the merger, USFL and uh, XFL? Can, and are, are you guys – kind of doing the football side of it right now. That's more the business end of it. And you're just waiting to see. How yeah. It you know, I, honestly, yeah. I listen, yeah, I, I got my team, my players, you know, I, I led the league with 14 of my starting players went to uh, NFL training camp. So I'm proud of what we did when we built a team from the ground up in a year. And, uh, you know, I got five guys that stuck that are in the league. So I'm just proud of that. And, uh, you know, we're going to continue to do that. We're building now we're, we're evaluating preseason cut players that are trying to get into the league, but probably will be around. And we're going to, we're going to uh, try to find the best guys to, to recoup some of the damage that the NFL did with taking some of my players, but I love it, man. It's, it's, it's a great medium. Uh, I, I love what Dion's doing in the game. I, you look at a former player that maybe a lot of people doubt it. You look at Dan Campbell, what he's doing, um, you know, the path that for these guys that are paving now, there was always a stigma with former players, right? It was, uh, they don't want to put the hours in. They don't want to work. Well, that may have been for a few guys, but there's a lot of former players out there that can bring a lot to the table. And if you look at my staff, I got a bunch of them because they played at a high level, really high for some of them, Leroy Glover, uh, R Ricky Pro, And these guys understand how to translate information to the guy that's missing a few holes in his game. And they're not looking at him like, man, how come he doesn't know how to do it like I did? That's not how – See, a lot of the players, that's what they they go through. They think that guys should be – why don't they pick it up like I did? Why don't they understand? That's not how it works. you got to be able to transfer information in a way to build these guys up properly so that they acquire that that knowledge and that skill set that you can bring to them that they dire, that they desperately need in these spring leagues and build them up and, ho and, and, and hopefully they can max themselves out and go to the league. Or they, they're going to be with us and they'll stick around and they're going to make our league great. So – uh, again, what the future holds for me, I'm not sure. I love the spring league. I love I can see my kid in the fall. It's a perfect situation. I knock on wood every day, man. I'm blessed. And uh, The Rock giving me that opportunity uh, is just phenomenal. And uh, I'm excited for, for, for what the future lies, whatever that may be. Well, I have to do this in honor of you and put an old fleet <laughs> hat on here from your days of being an, an, an assistant coach. Mike Martz gave me this thing here. Did you get so him to sign I, that? I mean, well, that, that, that would have been key. You get That thing would have been worth like, all like, money. Martz, Martz sign anything? Are you kidding me, man? No. I'm lucky yeah, I no. got him to come on my program when I did. Yeah, an old AAF uh, San Diego fleet hat here when he was the uh, – coach there on that coaching staff for Mike March. So I had to bring this baby out in honor of you. Anthony, thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Have a great call this weekend. Your son's killing it up at Iowa State, man. Thank you so much for coming aboard. You got it, Dan. Thanks for having me on. You bet. Anthony Beck, part of the pre and post game show for the New York Jets, also a former NFLer, and he is the head football coach 
there at the XFL with the St. Louis Battlehawks. All right, final segment coming up. We'll talk tonight's game. What happens? 49ers, Giants. We'll do that next. Keep it here on the National Football Show. Ball and Hooters, the perfect pair.